Hey, this is Mr. Aiden. This is calculus and this is differentiation. We're getting closer and closer and closer and closer to being able to define what a derivative is. What this this amazing solution of calculus has brought us to find the instantaneous rates of change. And we're going to use our limit concept in order to figure out this instantaneous rate of change. Now, we've just to this point been able to find out the average rate of change, the average slope. Okay? And that didn't give us the full picture. And what we want to find out is what's called the instantaneous rate of change. And so you can see here I have a function. This f of x is equal to 3x minus 2. And let's say we want to find out what's the instantaneous rate of change at x is equal to 1. So right at this point right here, what's the instantaneous, how fast is your slope change? What is your slope? How fast is your y changing with respect to your x at this exact point? Well, we know what the slope of the line is. The slope of the line is 3, isn't it? So the instantaneous rate of change, the change in the y over change in the x is equal to 3. Now that makes logical sense. Take a look. Right here at this point, if I took a look at this point, up and over, we would up 3 over 3. If, if, if I went down here to a point down here, it would stay the same because this slope is not changing. It's always going to be. So the, in this case, the average rate of change is equal to the instantaneous rate of change. And so you've always been able to find out rates of change of functions, linear functions, that look like this. this. This is why we, in science, we want to turn almost every function into a linear function. Why? Because it's easy to find the rate of change. But what about something like this? How would I find out the instantaneous rate of change at x is equal to 1? How would I figure that out? How would I figure out what the rate of change is right here? Now, could I estimate it? Yes, by taking a point here and a point here and doing the slope 8 over 1. But that's not a good estimate. Because take a look at this estimate from 8 over 1, these, these intervals that I know from here to here. Look at the slope here and take a look at the slope, the instantaneous slope here, it's it's similar, but it's not exactly the same. This slope is much steeper. This slope is eight over, sorry, eight over two. This this slope is equal to four. My bad. This slope is equal to four. This slope is not as great, is it? It's a little less steep. So how are we going to find this? How are we going to find this? Well. What we want to do is this. Let's take a look at what what's the slope from this x is equal to 1 and this x is equal to 2. So we're going to take the look take a look at the slope of this tangent line. Okay? And this tangent line. Now, you might say Mr. Aiden, that's not the instantaneous slope here, is it? Okay? No, it's not. But let's try it. So we have f of 1, we plug that in, 1 cubed is 1. We know f of 2, or 2 cubed, is 8. We know these two points. Now let's find the average rate of change, the change of y over the change in x here. And so we have 8 minus 1 over 2 minus 1. We have 7 over 1, so that slope is equal to 7 here. That rate of change is equal to 7. The rise was 7, the run was 1. Okay, the rise was 7, the run was 1. Now let's take a look at a point, 1.5. Okay, 1.5 right there. Okay, I'm going to change, change my colors so that we are doing okay here. We have a point right there, we have a point right there. Let's do a, um, a, a secant line. There's a secant line. This is getting closer now, isn't it? So I'm going to plug in f of 1. I already know what that is. It's 1. f of uh, 1.5. So I'm going to plug that in my calculator. I'm going to plug it into the function. We have 1.5 cubed, and that ends up being 3.375. So I'm going to take my change in y over my change in x, my 3.375, minus 1 
over 1.5 minus 1. So we have 3.375 minus 1 over 0.5, and that gives me 4.75. Guess what? That's getting closer to the slope of this line. So now let's let's look even deeper. Oh, we're looking deeper, deeper and deeper. Okay, let's take a look at 1.2, 1.2 right here, and right here. And now we're taking a look at the slope of this secant line from here to here. Okay, and so we have f of one is equal to one f of 1.2. So 1.2 cubed is 1.728. Let's look at the change in y over the change in x. So we have 1.728 minus 1 over 1.2. This is 1.2, sorry, minus 1. So minus 1 divided by 0 0.2, 3.64. That's getting closer and closer to the slope of the secant line. Now let's take a point even closer. What point do you want to take? Let's take the point f of one point. Let's see, one point. What do you want to do? One point. I'm trying to trying to hear what you want of it. Ah, so someone said f of one point zero five. Boy, that's even closer. That's really close to, to 1, isn't it? So we have 1.05 to the third power. That gives me 1.157625. Now we're going to do the change in the y over change in the x. We're going to do that minus 1. I'm not going to write it all out. Divide by 0 0.05, and we end up getting 3.1525, and that's the slope. Now let's go a point even closer f of 1 is equal to 1. Let's do f of 1.0001. Okay, do you see my lim limit concept coming? I'm looking at, at a point so close to 1, it's converging to a change in the x almost to 0, isn't it? So we have 1.0001 to the third power. Hopefully you're doing this on your calculator with me. We have 1.0003. Zero, 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 0003 and so I'm gonna look at my change in y or my change in x so we have the change in y is point zero 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 three zero 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 three what's my change in the x is point zero 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 one do you see how that x is getting closer and closer and closer to zero okay and I end up getting a slope of 3.0003000001. That's my slope. Can you can you figure out using the limit concept? What's the slope of this tangent line? We call that the tangent line right at x is equal to 1. What's what's the instantaneous slope going to be? What's the instantaneous rate of change going to be? It's going to be 3, isn't it? Because look at my li limit concept. From really far away, when this change in x was really big, we got 7. When the change in x was a little bit smaller, we got 4.75. When it was a little bit smaller, we got 3.64. When it was a little bit smaller, we got, we got 3.125. When it was really, really, really small, we got 3.0003. Can you see how it's converging? It's getting closer and closer and closer to 3. So I can say the slope, the instantaneous rate of change, the instantaneous slope, the tan slope of the tangent line, what we call the slope of the tangent line, or what we would call the derivative. The derivative is equal to 3 at this instantaneous point. Now, we have a lot of different uh, denotations for the rate of change or what's called de the derivative. If we have a function f of x we can call the derivative f prime of x. That's the derivative. If it's y equals x we can call it y prime. Okay. We can also call it dy over dx. 
there's many different ways to talk about the derivative, but this is called the derivative or the instantaneous rate of change. And we have a definition. The change in y over change at x, which we call the derivative, is equal to f of x plus h minus f of x over h as h approaches zero. As this change in your independent variable gets closer and closer and closer and closer to zero, you are going to converge onto your derivative or the slope of your tangent line. I hope this is making sense. It's getting exciting. This is called the instantaneous rate of change using the limits, or we call the derivative.